most of our working life is spent in earning money and investing it not just to grow it but the idea is that we should not be running out of money when we need it in the later phases of life in this video we'll talk about one of the instruments that can help you immensely it's a new weapon in my arsenal too hi everyone welcome to this educational video about systematic withdrawal plans there are seven case studies where i'll use excel to demonstrate the real power of this plan and i have tried to create real practical scenarios that all of us can relate to everyone could have their own definitions but i have divided life into four peaks and in my opinion the phase which matters most or which can be enjoyed most is approximately the age group of 35 to 45 so in this journey from your birth to death where do you think your wealth should be maximum or used maximum now once we have enough wealth at our disposal the next question is how to generate regular income out of it that could be because you want to achieve what is today called fire or it's a logical retirement stage for us where we will stop working the first one for most retirees is fd interest reasonably safe and you get monthly interest quarterly interest the general idea is you consume the interest and reinvest the principal if you have significant exposure to equity then one of the instruments could be dividends especially if you invested in the stocks very early in your life then the dividend yield could be fantastic but in case of dividends, you also have capital appreciation where stocks will eventually go up. The third one, which is not very popular today, but it is gaining popularity is bonds. Bonds are something like FDs, but their interest rate is way higher than FDs. Anywhere between 9-10% to 12-13%, the risk is higher, the reward is higher. You might have bought some real estate and put it on rental and that gives a reasonable yield. Just like I talked about dividend, if you bought the property really early, then the rental yield could be very high. Now, if most of your wealth is in equity, it could be equity direct or mutual funds, ETF, small cases, then you could be selling some of these units periodically to get money and spend it. You could have also subscribed to pension schemes where you get a reasonable monthly cash flow that you can use for your expenses. And the final one which we'll talk about today, Systematic Withdrawal Plan or SWP. We all know SIPs, SWPs are not very different. It is just opposite of a SIP. It is usually offered by a trading platform, broker, whoever you trade with. Idea is instead of investing money every month, every quarter or ad hoc, you withdraw money every month, every quarter. This could be a facility in the user interface of your broker's software or it could be done by you at will whenever you need money. When you implement SWPs, there could be three outcomes. The first one is you take some money out regularly but your corpus keeps growing what that means is your withdrawal rate is lesser than the growth rate of the fund the second one is where you are taking money out and that withdrawal rate is higher than the rate at which the money is growing as a result your corpus is reducing the third one is you are able to maintain your corpus at reasonable levels where it is neither going up nor going down note that in both cases you have to fight two enemies the first one is inflation and the second one is taxation a lot of people try to time markets beat SIPs or even SWPs. Markets are not predictable. You can't by will find bottoms like this where you can create corpuses and then enjoy a bull run and SWP withdrawal rates could be higher. Also for countries that are growing at a reasonable pace, leave out Japan here. The economies and stock markets grow at a reasonable pace over years and decades. The falls like this one which is pandemic. This is the election day 4th of June fall. These are digested within few days, few weeks or few months eventually. The ones like Great Depression in US which lasted few decades that are rare and not likely to happen in today's market conditions. Let's jump to the basics of the model now. In this festive season, suppose you have God's blessings and you get some decent money. The money by default lands in your saving bank account. In that account, you get about 3% interest rate. So suppose the amount is 20 lakh. The tax on the income in this case is around 34%. You'll get a monthly returns of 5,000, which is pre-tax. Once you apply the tax, that will be reduced to 3,300 per month. What if you decide to put this money into a fixed deposit? The interest rate is typically 7%. Tax rate remains same, 34%. The monthly return jumps to 11,667, which adjusted to tax is 7,700, more than double of what you were earning in your saving bank account. In both these cases, the risk is very low. But suppose you invest this money into reasonable bonds, which give 11%. The risk here is moderate, but here your pre-tax returns are 18,333. Now, if the base rate suppose is 12% and the money is invested into long-term instruments where tax is not 34% but long-term capital gain which is 12.5% applies then the pre-tax money is 20,000 earned per month the post-tax money is 17,500 this is the very fundamental of the model choosing the instrument with low tax and higher return let's increase this 1% very little just 0.1% to 1.1% 
that will lead to approximately 13% returns on your investment. The monthly return jumps to 21,667. Post tax, it is 18,960 approximately. Now, out of this 1.1%, if we withdraw just 1%, and leave 0.1% to be reinvested, then technically this corpus will always grow. That is because we are taking less money out of it than what the corpus is earning. Markets up and down, we are assuming here that markets eventually will take care of themselves. With this basic understanding of the model, let's jump to case studies which will further clear the model. The first one is a very popular use case, kids education. Most of us pay for kids education for 20 plus years from our salaries taking significant money out of the salary, reducing our investment appetite for most of our earning life. And aspirationally, we all want our kids to study in the best schools possible. So how to plan for kids' education using SWP? Let's suppose the kid is born on August 2024. Now, after two years, the child will enroll into a play school. Let's assume in a good school, the monthly expense right now is 25,000 and we extrapolate that to be approximately 30,000 in two, two and a half years from now. The typical milestones we want to plan for is preschool, which is approximately three to four years, then school, first grade to 12th grade, and then college. I'll now take you through the Excel model. Let's assume we are investing 1 lakh from month 1. This may look like a steep amount. However, note that we want to achieve a cash flow of 30,000 per month post-tax. And then we don't want to spend money on education for the kid for entire life. So we invest 1 lakh for 36 months. At the end of first year, we have 12 lakh in principal. This keeps on growing till the kid is enrolled in the school, April 27. At this stage, the corpus is already 38 lakh 52,000. 35,000 after tax becomes 36.25, which was our objective. At the end of one year, the fees will increase by 5%. Note that we have stopped the SIP in July 27, exactly three years after the start. Rinse and repeat. I have extrapolated the model till March of 42. At that stage, the withdrawal has become more than double, 72,000 per month. However, note that the corpus has increased. In fact, at this stage, the compounding inflation is catching up and the corpus has started reducing a bit. The withdrawal rate has gone up to 1.4% or 1.5%, which was around 0.9% at this stage. Why? Because inflation of 5% also is compounding and we are not adding any fresh money. So you'll end up with a corpus of nearly 50 lakh in about 15 years time which takes care of 3 to 4 years of preschool and 12 years of formal education. Your kid will pass 12th grade with this corpus and for college you'll have 50 lakh left. Will this 50 lakh be enough? Let's check that. So after 15 years at inflation of 5%, that is equivalent to about 25 lakh of today, which may or may not be sufficient depending upon which college your kid goes to. Next case study, passive income that paves the path for fire, which is the third one. Objective, create a parallel income stream to take care of some expenses. Let's say mandatory grocery, 10,000 per month. Repeat the process to increasingly take care of expense heads. So in the beginning, salary is used for everything. Then salary is used for most things. Some things are sponsored by passive income. After that, passive income takes care of most of the things. Finally, salary becomes discretionary or optional. We no longer need to work for money. Let's see how we achieve it from the model. So our goal is to take home 10,000 rupees. We are investing 1 lakh rupees in this example 18 months. But we are starting immediately with the withdrawals, which means that the initial withdrawals are 6.6% of the corpus reducing to eventually become 1% or lesser. Noted initial months will be STCG or 20% tax rate. After that, it becomes 12.5%. August is only investment of 1 lakh. September, we start with interest added 1 lakh 1,000, add 1 lakh to it. We withdraw 12,500, which gives a take home of 10,000. This was a desired outcome. As soon as year one is done, the take home will increase significantly because tax has gone down. Every April, we are going to increase the withdrawal by 5% to take care of inflation. So the take home that we have in this column is adjusted to tax as well as inflation. We stop adding money after January of 26, which means initial principal is 18 lakh. One thing we have done is, we have put 20,000 ad hoc every year. General idea is we are earning money right now. We are employed and we are trying to create passive income. So if market gives an opportunity, then try and buy more of your fund at a lower price. We could tune it by making it zero. Let's see. So this 35 lakh corpus becomes 26 lakh as a result. Rinse and repeat, the process continues between August 24 and December 40, which is approximately 16 years. We have fed the model 20 lakh 80,000 as the principal from our pocket. We have withdrawn 37 lakh 31,000. 
post tax in our pocket we have got 32,53,000 and the corpus which remains in the end is 35 lakh still. Note that this corpus is not reducing. So we could continue and stretch this model for life. If we need 1 lakh rupees instead of 10,000 in the beginning, then this process needs to be carried out 10 times. The goal will not be very different, but the process and the initial amount may look scary right now. Most of us don't face the reality. That is why we end up with less money than we want when we retire. Third case study is about fire. Once we have started our journey with passive income and passive income takes care of our expensive, then we are financially independent and we can financially retire now. First objective, create replacement for entire salary. In the previous case study, we talked about replacing 10,000 expense. The corpus should not reduce over time. Otherwise, we'll run out of money at some stage. Also, salary or active income should not be required at any stage in future. We are now talking about this final stage. Let's ask Excel how to achieve that. We are using a base of 20 lakh corpus as a base for this example. There is no money added later on. We are withdrawing 15,000 in the first month. Since the corpus is high, the initial withdrawal is not very high, 0.7%. Towards December, we are withdrawing 1% of the corpus every month. This is what the model talked about. Don't withdraw more than 1%. If you look at this stage, 33 lakh, 33 lakh, at no stage has this reduced. So the final outcome, we invested 20 lakh. We withdrew 45 lakh nearly pre-tax. We are left with 34 lakh. Whatever is our fire amount, we need to add more investments to it now. So if you need 1.5 lakh per month, we need a corpus of 2 crore. The fire amount for most people right now is around 7-8 crores. Most of those people want to keep the money in FD, not equity. This is a common mistake because of which most people work a lot longer than they should and create a mountain which is bigger than what they want of the money they have earned and invested. Have a realistic fire goal and start early in your life, not when you are 40 or 45. Next case study, how to manage home loans. Idea is you have some lump sum you want to prepay. My home loan is from HDFC Bank. I've used their calculator. So if you have a loan of 20 lakh at 9% interest rate, your EMI will be 18,000. Now we have two options. One is we could take the money and pay it to the bank. The second option we want to explore is, should we invest the money into something which will give a return which is equal or higher than option one, where I'll not have to pay the bank from my pocket, but probably that decision will be better than paying the bank directly, getting rid of the money and not getting any return out of it. Let's explore that using Excel. 20 lakh is the amount we talked about. We need 18,000 money to give to the bank. For that, we have to withdraw 22,500. Note that in this model, there is no inflation. In fact, we have reduced after one year this amount to 20,600 because we need 18,000 only. Banks typically increase your tenure if interest rates increase. They don't increase the EMI amount. So initially, you are withdrawing more than 1%, which is 1.1%, which goes down to 1%. Since there is no inflation, this amount eventually becomes 0.7%. We have withdrawn 40,60,400. After adjusting to tax, this became 35,32,000, which we have paid to the bank. We are still left with 27,77,000 after 16 years. Hopefully, your home loan would have finished by now. If you prepay this entire amount in August of 24 to the bank, then this money is earned by the the bank not you this money also is increasing if you see so after paying your loan this could become your passive income or fire instrument now home loans are slightly emotional decision also it's a big amount of liability most people want to get rid of it as soon as possible so that you have property papers in your hand it is difficult to tie emotions with finance all right next case study never run out of money you want to retire but after that you don't want to work again ever in life when it's time to retire, suppose you have one CR as your investment corpus. This is what you have earned and grown over your life. And you get 25 lakh as retirement money, PF, PPF. Assumption is you have no EMIs or your kids' liabilities with you any longer. Let's try to model this requirement in Excel now. So 1.2 CR goes into the investment column here, August 24. You are withdrawing 1 lakh per month which is a take home of 80,000 initially. First year onwards, your take home is going to be 92,000 inflation and tax adjusted. Is the corpus growing 1 crore 25 lakh to start with? July 44, the corpus has started reducing a little. At this rate, your corpus is reducing. You might still not run out of money. Let's try and tune it a little. Let's reduce our expenses by just 1,000, 99,000. So I just tried 90,000 now. Now this model is continuously growing. So to take care of inflation, you need to start with about 0.7-0.8% kind of withdrawal. 
not one or one point one percent because that needs to adjust to inflation compounding. So one crore twenty five thousand investment will give you a take home of seventy two thousand in first year, and after that you will start getting eighty three thousand nearly for life adjusted to tax and inflation, and the corpus will keep on growing. One crazy thought if you are in India is do you want to retire with no money left? Idea is why create a mountain more than what you need and leave it for the next generation. Let them earn on their own. Why do you want to work five or ten years more? Create a mountain for them and reduce the amount of retirement years in your life. Let's try and model it. Same example investment corpus of one point two CR. So we are going to withdraw one lakh seven thousand from SWP starting August twenty four. Probably we are around sixty years at this time retired. Maybe twenty years left in life. So that is why the simulation is till July of forty four. At the end of twenty years, you are left with eight lakh eighty seven thousand out of money. But through this entire period of time, you have withdrawn more. If you withdraw less, say ninety thousand, then you are left with the portfolio which is ever growing. So somewhere between ninety thousand and one lakh ten thousand is the right withdrawal amount based upon your strategy. Interesting theory, but no one in India will want to run out of money or not leave it to their kids. The final case study is slightly emotional. You might have seen your parents if they are retired or your grandparents. Penny pinch a lot of expenses. They will not buy expensive phones. They will not upgrade their laptops. They will not change their air conditioner if it is giving a little trouble. That is because there is a fear of running out of money. So in this model, can we handle these ad hoc expenses? How? So we'll use the never out of money model here. But we could use a die with zero also. That's not a problem. Let's suppose some stock gave you a fantastic return in May of twenty five, maybe fifty thousand return, which is good enough to buy a television which you want to upgrade to or might need in two three years time. So fifty thousand ad hoc invested into this model. Let's make everything else zero. So if this fifty thousand was not added, then the final outcome would have been two crore seventy eight lakh. That became seven lakh more. However, suppose the TV goes burst at this time and you need a replacement, so you get fifty thousand out. This was two seventy eight earlier. This is two seventy nine right now. This suppose you want to plan a vacation, say at your fiftieth anniversary or something. Let's add three lakh here. Let's take out ten lakh at this stage. So not much of a change. Let's talk about some of the key risks in the model. What could go wrong? The model has accounted for five percent inflation. The real inflation could be high. You always hear about US printing a lot of money. It's not US alone. This is India's money supply, the currency notes. This is demon when the currency was burnt or destroyed. After that, so much extra currency has been printed by India to take care of the current account deficit. This is happening in all countries in the world, nearly including United States, including India. Also, look at key commodity prices. Say copper. Just around pandemic, it crashed. Then EVs came around. It went from nearly two to five. So commodity prices also can change with respect to phenomena like EVs coming into circulation, and that could create a havoc in terms of inflation and impact your portfolio. The second one is tax changes. We had some of them in the current budget. Income tax. We expect every year that they will come down. They don't come down. LTCG and STCG were revised higher this time. My personal opinion is STCG will go to the normal tax rate of around 34%. LTCG will go to probably 20% over the years, and you'll have to work few years more to account for additional tax possibly if you don't invest well. In markets crash from time to time. Pandemic market crash by nearly 40%. Ukraine war. These events could destroy your wealth, reduce it by nearly 40-50% maybe. Will it? Actually not. Unless you decide to sell at the wrong moment when the markets are tanking, if you have the courage, if you stay put, markets only go up. This is the graph of Nifty. Where is the Y two K fall? Where is the mortgage fall? This was two thousand eight crisis. Yes, markets fell a lot. What's the level since then? Pandemic, thirty forty percent fall. What happened after that? Where is Ukraine in this? Can't even find it. On fourth of June of this year, when election results were announced, many stocks were down twenty five percent. Can you find it in this curve? No. Because next day markets were back, so problems do come. Some stocks may become zero. If you are well diversified, if you have invested say in index funds, then you have reasonable safety net. The percentage return of 13% we talked about. That's average return over the years despite these problems. Hope this video was useful. This is only for educational purpose. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.